Both of today's readings speak of religious difficulties and failures. The incident evoked in the first reading is well known. Moses, having received the tablets of the covenant from God, is told that in his absence the people have set up a golden calf and are worshiping it as if it were their God. The text underlines how insulting this action is to God. He's portrayed as wanting to vent his wrath on them. Only the intervention of Moses prevents him from doing so. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Moses pleads, and the promise you made to them that their descendants would be like the stars of heaven. In today's gospel, we are told that the religious leaders are seeking to kill Jesus because he is calling God his own father. In responding to their complaints, Jesus appeals to the scriptures as well as to the kind of life-affirming things that he has been doing. These, he says, bear testimony to him, as does God himself speaking in their hearts. For whatever reason, they refuse to believe either Jesus or the witnesses to whom he appeals. Today's psalm sums up the sin of the Israelites at Sinai in saying that they exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. Jesus also refers to the theme of glory. He declares that his opponents accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God. The glory of God in the Bible is the radiance and power and beauty of God. It is God as he becomes visible through his activity in the world. To give glory to God is to recognize his glory, to recognize him as God, and to offer him the worship and praise that are his due. We all have some sense of what human glory means. In the past, it was associated in a special way with successful political and military leaders. Such people sought to win glory by undertaking great public works or waging war. Today, glory has become more democratized, but also in many cases cheapened. Relating as it now often does to fame and public recognition, it tends to be more easily won and more easily lost. The analogy in our experience of what happened at Mount Sinai involves turning our back on God and making something other than God the be-all and the end-all of our efforts and our desires. The idols we set up are all but countless. They can take the form of money or power or influence. For an academic or scientist, they might mean a certain kind of scholarly achievement. For a business person, a killing on the stock market. For an athlete, being the star on a championship team. There's nothing wrong with such things in themselves. They become idols when everything is sacrificed to them, from honesty and health to family and friends. When that happens, they become like God for us. We seek the glory that comes from God when we try to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. For us as Christians, that means being a person of faith and hope and love. It also means being a moral person, someone who struggles to do what is right and good and to avoid all that is either harmful to others or destructive of oneself. To be someone like that in the world in which we live demands a real effort. It's not always easy to avoid being trapped in things that sooner or later will compromise our integrity and undermine our religious life. 
one of the great gifts that is ours as Catholic Christians is the ability to share on a regular basis in the Eucharist. It offers us an enormous help in meeting the challenges that confront us. By drawing us into its attitude of worship and praise, especially in the great Eucharistic prayer itself, it teaches us how to give glory to God in the proclamation of the scriptures and in the reenactment of the ritual of the Last Supper. We are reminded of the life of Jesus and of the kind of attitudes and values that ought to mark the life of his disciples. Through our exposure to such things, we gradually learn to reject what is incompatible with the glory that comes from God and to embrace what disposes us for it. Our celebration enables us both to give God glory and to be glorified by him. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that our sharing in this Eucharist will renew and purify our faith, let us pray to the Lord. For victims of hunger and violence in Darfur and elsewhere in Africa, let us pray to the Lord. For peace and justice throughout the world and especially in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. For our children, that they will be provided with convincing models of religious and moral maturity, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. All powerful God looked upon our weakness. May the sacrifice we offer bring us purity and strength. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks. This great season of grace is your gift to your family to renew us in spirit. You give us strength to purify our hearts, to control our desires, and so to serve you in freedom. You teach us how to live in this passing world with our hearts set on the world that will never end. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever. <laughs> 